Well, federal Green Party leader Elizabeth May and a new Democrat MP were arrested at a Trans Mountain Pipeline demonstration in Burnaby, British Columbia. She was arrested, Elizabeth May, and has since been freed. And she joins me now live from Vancouver. Ms. May, great to have you on. Uh, tell us what happened. Thanks, Omar. Well, there have been, as you know, uh, a lot of legal questions about the legitimacy of Kinder Morgan's permits. Uh, and I've been very disturbed that the fact that we're waiting for court rulings on whether these permits that were granted by the federal liberals violate indigenous rights, violate the, the, the process by which the permits were granted by the NEB remains very problematic. I was an intervener in that process. So it was, it was some time ago that in discussions with indigenous leaders and hearing that people were going to be prepared to risk arrest in order to protest if the permits were granted in the absence of evidence, I hoped it wouldn't come to this. But I have been thinking about it for a very long time as someone who was an intervener in the Kinder Morgan process and where my community and the, the, the voters in Saanich Gulf Islands and citizens of, of our communities are very, very concerned about a sevenfold increase in tankers carrying a material that can't be cleaned up if it spills. All of this led but to a moment thing. today where I was on a line in front, of, in front of the gates and faced arrest. Here's the thing, though. There, there will be some people watching out there saying, look, there was an injunction issued by the B.C. Supreme Court last week that basically established where protesters could be and where they couldn't be. And you are a lawmaker in this country. Not only that, you are the leader of a federal political party, and you have violated that. Is that... Is that something that you want to be doing? I mean, should, shouldn't you be leading by example? I hope I am leading by example. I believe matters of conscience are important. And if you engage in, as I just have done today, it's the first time in my life I've ever been arrested. I mean, I'm the 63-year-old grandmother, and I'm suddenly, <laughs> now I'm a person who's faced arrest. The reality is that nonviolent civil disobedience has a legitimate place in a democratic society. I'm not the first uh, member of parliament to be arrested. Uh, the, we, Bob Ray was arrested many years ago on the logging road in Tomogamy. Uh, Sven Robinson was arrested on the logging roads of Queen Charlotte Islands, now Haida Gwaii. My view is that it shouldn't happen often, but if a matter of conscience is so strong, if the matter that's being described as legal is wrong at so many levels in terms of our climate crisis, in terms of indigenous rights, in terms of the threat to our salmon and our whales, I felt a, a really strong sense of moral obligation. But of course, anyone who violates the law has to be prepared to face the consequences, and I certainly am prepared to do that. Uh, I'll be presenting myself in court, uh, in the law courts of Vancouver. But the, this is, I think people need to think about the, uh, some things that were once illegal were protested by people who engaged in nonviolent civil disobedience, whether it was Rosa Parks sitting down on the whites only section of a bus, or, or Gandhi uh, protesting against British rule in India. It's, there is a tradition in which this is legitimate as long as it's nonviolent and as long as but you're But you've got a situation in this country, Ms. May, where you've got the National Energy Board, which has already you know, weighed the merits of this project. You've got the Prime Minister saying this project will be built. Um, you know, is, is the goal here to try to cause as much delay as possible so that the company will, will perhaps cave? Is that what you want to happen? No, I want the facts brought to light. You just made the statement the National Energy Board weighed the, the project. They didn't. The National Energy Board refused to hear the evidence from Unifor, the largest union in the oil sands, that if this project were to go ahead, it would cause Canadians to lose jobs. It would be a negative for our employment. The National Energy Board refused to hear Unifor's evidence and said that the jobs issue was not in their mandate. They never did a study that said, is this going to be in Canada's economic best interests, uh, what are the environmental risks of bitumen and diluent. Their process was very, very truncated, rushed by a lack of time, refused to allow people to cross-examine witnesses. But I think it's really quite shocking how many Canadians don't know, because it wasn't really reported, that the National Energy Board did not, in its review, consider whether Kinder Morgan would create more jobs than it killed. That's fundamental. There is no study independent uh, by any level of government that actually can make the case that this project is good for Canada. What would be good for Canada okay. would be not to have a war between Alberta and BC. We should be refining the product in Alberta for use in Canada. Then we wouldn't be having this kind of very divisive conflict.
I've just got 15 seconds left, so I need a quick one on this. So you support other people in their acts of civil disobedience vis-a-vis -vis this project? Absolutely, nonviolent. As long as their, their actions are nonviolent, you're prepared to accept the consequences. Really, in this issue, I think Kinder Morgan's permits are highly questionable. We're awaiting decisions by the Federal Court of Appeal. And until those decisions are rendered, I don't think that, that Kinder Morgan should be plowing ahead with its project when its permits may, in fact, be illegal. The courts have yet to rule on that. Ms. May, uh, certainly a busy few hours for you. I appreciate you uh, coming on and sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you, Omar.